You're going to throw me out? Yeah, I love you. <laughs> you okay? You hit your head? She's all concussed. She's all- Are you okay? You okay? <laughs> all right, Daddy's going to do a podcast, okay? Daddy, you're going to throw me out? Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. <laughs> You okay? <laughs> Bye. Careful. Ooh, ooh, oh. Ooh, ooh. Watch out, watch out. oh my gosh. What's up, bro? How you doing? Finally. <sighs> We're here. <laughs> <laughs> After months and months. I'm saying, hey, we need to start it up again. Two years later. Gosh. Time flies. It feels like we never left. I know, huh? Kind of picking up where we left off type of thing. So, um, are we live? Yeah, we're 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 going. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Oh, snap! Okay, all right. Wasn't aware. So, what's new, bro? Ah, a lot, bro. For both of us, huh? Yeah, a lot has changed, dude. Um, started up the church. Uh, the twenty eighth, actually. What is it? Five days is gonna be two years. Already that we opened up the church. So you're pastoring in Marana, yeah, Arizona. Yep, Marana, Arizona. Yeah, yeah. I've been open for about two years, man. It's going really well. Yeah, it's going really well. Yeah, yeah. We got a good core of people. Um, you know, people are coming out. The last four weeks, actually, we've had we've had visitors every Sunday. Um, so yeah, and then we had a boy, had a baby. Now the baby, uh, he was born September first. Wow. Yeah. So little Nehemiah, uh, he, so he'll be two here coming up as well. But uh, yeah, man, two years have gone by super fast. But like you said, it doesn't even it doesn't yeah. even feel like it, you know. So yeah, I um I had a little girl. Uh yeah. Since since we last did an yeah. episode, you know, yeah. um, she'll be two in December. They're like right there. Yeah. Yep. I think your son's older than my daughter. Yeah, he was born in September. Yeah. He was supposed to be born later, uh, but he came. He, How he much was, later? He was born. Uh, he was supposed to be born November 17th, I believe. Oh, he would have still been older. Yeah. Yeah. So, but, um, but yeah, what's her name? Adelie. Adelie. Yeah. Uh, and Jaden. How old is he now? He's four. That's crazy. He's sitting behind you right there. There he is. What are you Isaiah, doing? Isaiah is 11 now. 11? Yeah, he's 11. Sixth grade. I got a middle schooler. Oh, shoot. Yeah, middle schooler already. That, is, he, is he in school or is he online? No, he is uh, what, what you call Vail Innovative. So he, it's online, but you actually have a teacher through Zoom. Okay. So, um, yeah, he's in there with a few others. So somebody from, the, uh, from you guys' church, too. <laughs> Picking up right where we left off. So this will be the last episode <laughs> of season four. <laughs> Is he going to have more kids? Maybe. Maybe? I don't know. Maybe Damn. one more. I don't know. That's brave. The thing is, is she wants to wait longer because we did like two years okay. between. Yeah. And it didn't seem like enough time. <laughs> so now she, maybe she wants to wait like another five uh, before the next one. I think that's good. That's good. But you see how easy my daughter listens? Yeah. Oh, okay. My son is like, we're pulling his teeth, you know? Yeah. So. It's because he wants to be with dad, hang out with the boys. Parenting for me is like, I don't want to spoil mm-hmm. my kids. And I don't want, I don't want to over-discipline my kids. Mm. So I'm trying to figure out like, when is it too much and when is it not enough? You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So, you know, I think the challenge is in just a couple months ago, I started experiencing this and I started to realize how much the absence of my father uh, impacted me. Right. And not just talking about, you know, the obstacles because you too. Right. Like, you know, me, and you grew up with what single moms, I guess you could say. Right. Yeah. yeah. yeah my mom was single. You know, my mom, your mom was single. You know, yeah. I was an only child. You weren't. But, you know, your siblings, you know. They got their own stories, right? You know, um, but it's kind of like I'm in the same boat. I have an older son; he's 11, right? So 
he's entering that age where, you know, preteen, you know, whatever the case may be, you know, but pubescence. Yeah. <laughs> but, it, you know, I'm in that boat too. It's like, how much oh, do I. Oh, you went I, through puberty too. How much? <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> uh, but I'm in the boat in the sense of like, obviously, discipline in him is different than. You know, if you have, you know, like a four or five year old, but how much do I give him? How much do I not without spoiling him? I do it in the bathroom or mm -hmm. at home, mm -hmm. but I feel like that needs to be said, mm -hmm. right? Like, hey, spank your kids. Yeah. I spank my kids, mm -hmm. right? Um, I don't beat them. I do it in a, in a way that'll show them that I love them mm. and show them that, hey, you're being foolish right now. Yeah. It's time for a whooping. Yeah. You know? Yep. Um, I don't just hit wherever. I don't do it when it's I'm the butt. when I'm angry, right? Yep. So what are your thoughts on that as far as like spanking and discipline? Um, oh, man, my, you know, my mom spanked me all the time, you know? Spanked me all the time and I obviously it's biblical, you know? It's biblical. Now there's parents that, you know. See, the, the thing with society nowadays is that they get their doctrine from YouTube and TikTok and trends and doctors that go and, you know, mm -hmm. just the same as people get their spiritual doctrine off of YouTube and 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 TikTok and every, you know, everything else, they, every, podcasts, right? You know, especially with the pandemic, podcasts just like took off. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like everybody started a podcast, you know, right during the pandemic. So everybody has an opinion. Like the other day I was watching a video and this guy, he gets on the mic and he's doing a TED talk and he articulates something very well. He begins to explain it. And I'm just like, oh man, this guy knows a lot. Mm -hmm. And then at the end, he's just like, you realize I just made all that up, right? Oh, I've seen that. And I was like, whoa, like the way you said it was like so convincing. Yeah. So he, that's, he that's. threw in like false, like. Uh, statistics, statistics and all, yeah. And, yeah. and if you don't know any better, you're eating all that up, right? And, and it's the same thing I think with, you know, people that get their, you know, their doctrine of disciplining kids or not disciplining kids uh, off of social media, right? You don't, you, you, and they do it all in the name of God, mm -hmm. right? Like, oh, you know, I, I don't know. It's it, you know, to each their own, right? Like, I'm not saying this is how you need to raise your kid. Um, I'm gonna say what what worked for me, and what I think is, because Isaiah, man, my my oldest, you know, thank God, you know, I mean, spanked him when he was a little kid and stuff like that, but he was always really like, don't do this, and he would stop, mm. right? He's not perfect, and I know that he's got his attitudes, you know, and all that. Even my little boy, he's gonna be two. In Nehemiah, he's got his. This guy, I'm gonna have to whoop him a lot. I can already tell, you know. Yeah, but like you said, it's all in love. Right. And you, you don't do it to hurt them. So. I remember as a, I mean, I grew up not in a Christian home, you know. There you go, yep. So if there was a belt nearby, thank you, Jesus, right? Mm -hmm. But I remember her grabbing the iron and oh, using the cord yeah. of iron just to, mm. Oh, yeah, yeah. Or, or, or throwing her shoe at me mm -hmm. or throwing a plate at me, yeah. you know? Yeah. It's whatever was nearby. <laughs> And, like, a and, good, like a good Mexican. Yeah, and then the, the worst, or uh, I would go behind the door and shut it, and mm. then she'd get something that she could whip around the door. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's crazy. And then, I, and then I got to a certain age where it was just like, you're not going to hit me yeah, anymore. Yeah. You know? Uh, you know, it's just mm -hmm. uh, risk control. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> and then she realized, oh, crap, you know? Yeah. But then luckily I got saved. Yeah. You know? There you go. Right, yeah. right before that could get any worse. Mm -hmm. But... But yeah, man, I mean, a lot of the discipline that I do, I've learned from Pastor Garrett, how he disciplined his kids, you know, you yeah. just, you know, not out of anger, be patient. And then yep. immediately after you tell them, I love you, give me a hug, go yeah. play, you yep. know? Yep. Yep. So it's been actually interesting because recently I had to, I, like, this was on, what's today? Today's Friday. It was on Wednesday night, two nights ago at church. Mm -hmm. Dude, he was crying a lot. And after service, we're driving home, and he goes, like, it's quiet, right? We're driving. He, uh, he did good in there while he was in there. Mm -hmm. And he goes, Dad, I'm sorry for being foolish. Oh, you said that? Yeah. Oh, wow. Like, he knew. Yeah. Finally, he said that in the car, and I was like, wow. 
Like it, it all made it clicked in for me and it clicked mm -hmm. in for, for him. him. Yeah. Like it, it was worth it, right? Because he understood like I was being foolish and I had just admitted and I'm sorry for that. Like yeah. that act of, of repentive heart, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. And so it was like a little glimmer of hope. I was like, oh, okay. Yeah. All right, so yeah, he does get it. He's getting it. Yeah, you know, it's yeah. not it's not too much. Yeah, it's I'm only responding to what he's doing. Yeah, I'm not just doing it because you're annoying. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because yeah. yeah. I mean, you got. I mean, I don't hide it. If my uh -huh. kid's annoying, I'm like, dude, stop. <laughs> I'm like, oh, it's okay, Mijo. Oh, you're so cute. I'm like, no, dude, you're go. annoying. Get away. <laughs> I love and, you. <laughs> and yeah, and, and maybe that's makes me. You know, it makes me who I am. That's who I am. You yeah. know, I'm not gonna. You know, I don't yeah. know. Maybe yeah. I need, I, maybe I need to be better because he's yeah. he's still a baby, and you know, technically, it's true. Yeah. So he has emotions of like a cat and a little kitten, and I'm just like crushing him every time I tell him like, get away. I love you. <laughs> love. I love you. By the way. So yeah, yeah. No, you know, I I think that's very true. I think with anything, right? It's if you're gonna be good at something, parenting. If you're gonna be a good Christian, it takes work. You got to work at it. If you want to be a good father. You gotta be you, it's yeah. work it's easy to just hey here's the tablet leave me alone here's the phone leave me alone which we're all guilty of okay i'm not gonna sugarcoat it you know yeah. the parents out there that, that you know oh well my son has gets zero screen time and you know hey if you can do that kudos to you man you know but there's just times where it's just like here's yeah. the phone i need five quiet minutes there's been um <laughs> you know? So when he was younger, like one and two, we would start giving him the tablet, right? Mm -hmm. When we we're out to eat, because in a restaurant with a kid that's learning how to exist, I was like, mm -hmm. you know, and then we decided we're not going to do that anymore. Like if we're out eating, you don't get a phone, mm -hmm. you don't get a tablet. You're going to have conversations with all of us. Yeah. And it's been working like, like he's been good. You know, the only times I've given my phone to him is when like, um, like I gave him the phone one time when my daughter was sick. We took her to the urgent care mm -hmm. and we we're sitting in the truck waiting. It's like, you're just, it's torture, you know? Yeah, like, what yeah. are you going to do? So yeah. here, play Mario Kart yeah. on my phone. Yeah. So I, I've given it to him like that a few times. Yeah. But um, yeah. And then now, like when we have dinner, we turn off the TV. Like, you're, mm -hmm. We're not watching anything when we have dinner either. Mm -hmm. It's because like, we're, we're just going to talk. Yeah. So. But yeah, I, I know. I've done it. I've done it too where it's like, hey man, um, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. My wife doesn't like it. Yeah. She never gives him her phone. Yeah. So I'm more guilty of doing it than, yeah. than my wife. My yeah. wife won't budge. Yeah. So you know, Zay has Zay has his own phone right now and you know, there's reasons behind that. He's in sixth grade and you know, he goes to vision, stuff like that. You monitor just, that? Oh yeah. Yeah. So do you get like text messages if something? Yeah, I, I have. I I downloaded the Bark Bark app. I pay uh -huh. like fifteen bucks a month, and I can monitor everything. And he's restricted with. He can't. He doesn't. He doesn't have Google. He doesn't have Safari. He can't go online. Period. Like oh, nothing. Nice. Like nothing. Nothing. Uh, he watches YouTube, but all that's monitored, and you know. So he basically just uses it to watch like Fortnite clips. Yeah. Um. You know, and text message and call, and that's it. And if his friends include like, like let's say they're in a group chat and they include a number that's not in his contacts, he can he can no longer be in that group chat. Like the phone will block. What if it. they so, send like clips on the chat? As long as as long as the person sending the clip is in his contacts, they can. He can watch them. But if they if they're not on, like let's say, you know, like you and me and Luke and Paul are on the group chat, and then. One of your friends sends. We sound like the disciples. You, know, you me, Luke, and you, Paul. You, me, Luke, and Paul. Hey. <laughs> um, and let's say one of your friends joins the group and sends a clip. I can't see it. Oh, like, okay. I'm restricted from seeing it because okay. he's not in my contacts. So you just got a vet who's in his phone. Yeah, he can't add anybody oh, nice. without me approving it. Uh, he can't download anything without me approving it. Uh, okay. Nothing. That's cool, so, man. So, yeah, you know, but again, you know, some people are like, oh, it's too young or whatnot. And that's where the, you know, the fine line is, right? Like, right. do you think he, you know, he's too young? Do we, you know, all that. So um, I'm, I'm a little bit more lenient. So I grew up with a very strict mom, and I thank God for that. But there's just some differences, you know, that I said, you know what? When I have kids, you know, 
I'm okay with allowing this. But at, but at the same time, I'm still learning, man. And I thank God that I have godly men in my life. You know, you mentioned Pastor Garrett. Same thing, Pastor Garrett, you know, Pastor Smith. Other people that you can look at and glean off. And you're just mm-hmm. like, ooh, I like that. Or I don't like that, you know. Just the same yeah. thing with being a pastor, you know. I, I gleaned off so many men, and I have my own style, you know, because there's, there's stuff that you see about a pastor, you're just kind of like, oh, I like that. But then there's other stuff you see about that same pastor, and you're just like, oh, I don't like that, right? And it's not that you're criticizing him. It's just, hey, I don't agree necessarily with that how, style. How, he, how he says things or how he approached it. You know, I have my own way, right? So, you know, it's the same thing with Which parenting. I think is important because, I mean, if we were all the same, mm-hmm. I mean... Yeah. Only a certain amount of people would respond, yep, you know. Exactly. Like yeah. You're gonna reach people in Marana mm-hmm. that are gonna see your character, see your personality, see the way you do things, and like it, mm-hmm. and decide they want to go. Right. Yep. yep. I mean, off obviously, the Holy Spirit's gonna lead them yep. and all that jazz. Yep. But yep. there's also the other side of it. People are gonna see like, hey, I don't really like the way he does this. Mm-hmm. Maybe this church isn't for me. Yep. You exactly. Know? Yeah. And and that's normal, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah. So I, I agree. Yeah, you know? yeah. So, but yeah, man. You know, parenting is fun. It's challenging. Trust me, man. And and and, and you know, we put him in in Vail Innovative because I remember when I was in elementary, I was a straight A student. You know, I remember getting the president's award and certificate signed by Bill Clinton, or so they said, right? All that straight A's. And as soon as I went to middle school, bro, I started seeing like, you know girls in a different way mm. i started seeing like you know like you know people holding hands and mm. they were like yep. kissing and stuff like that and from that point on dude like i just my grades just tanked Whew. that was it just because you, you were watching a bunch of people yeah well i started or you, you started know, doing I, stuff no i didn't no i didn't start doing that i was too i was too afraid of my mom oh okay. and i was scared but like inside of me my conscience my brain my emotions, my hormones, everything just started to change. I was, I, I started seeing girls in a different way now. You know, you're now elementary, like, oh, you, you know, you have a crush on a girl or whatever. Yeah. But now it's kind of like you see, and you're just like, oh, they're holding hands. Oh, they're kissing. Oh, they're over here in the corner of the lockers, and they're messing around, right? Because you have eighth graders now. Right. You know what I'm saying? And, and, you know, girls are no longer little girls. They're mm-hmm. young women. You know what I'm saying? Right. So, um I said, you know what? I need to shield my son as much as I can for as long as I can, you know. And there's a so lot. when do you, when do you so, think you'll bring him back in? We'll see. I mean, we're trying it this year, you know, uh, and we'll see how he does, you know. Nice. And that he he's doing really well grade wise, but socially, you know, all that stuff. We're thankful that you know we're still here in town, and he can go to Vision Unlimited and you know play with mm-hmm. his friends there and things like that. So, but we'll see. Um, so yeah, man, you know. But what else is new? Um, what else? So I sold my, my t-shirt business. Well, I got rid of it. I, uh, oh, okay. Yeah. So that's how, that's how we're able to do this again. Cause that took up all the space, you know? I remember. Yeah. So it's finally, uh, got some space back and, uh, that's in transition going, uh, back to, uh, a buddy of mine who mm-hmm. wants to take it over. So, okay. um, and, uh, that's about it, man. Yeah. I mean, I'm training a lot, you know, for this upcoming uh, uh, competition in Vegas for... Oh, you're um, in November, right? Yeah, yeah, for powerlifting. Nice. So that's going good. Um, What's your personal best? Or what do you call it? My PR or what is it? Personal P- record. Personal record, there you go. So my deadlift is at 500. Oh, um, days. That's my weakest, right? Uh, I mean, that's not really impressive when you, when you look at other guys that are really good at deadlifting. Mm-hmm. But I started at the end of April, like April 20th-ish mm-hmm. till now. So about three, three months, almost four. Mm-hmm. Um, and when I started, my deadlift was 225. Oh, so you've doubled it. Yeah. So it's, it's good 100%. progress. Huh? 100% increase. Yeah. So, so it's good progress. Yeah. It's a good start. Um, just keep building on it, right? Mm-hmm. My bench, however, I'm at 405 for two. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So my bench is, and when I started, I mean, I was doing 225 for like six. Mm-hmm. So now I'm at 405 for two. So Gosh. I did the math, like I have an app. Uh-huh. 
that tells you if if you do this many reps for this weight, then your one rep max would be this. Mm -hmm. So it's saying two thirty or four thirty is my one rep max. Uh, if I was so I don't know I haven't tried it, but um, yeah man it's uh, I'm excited man because my my coach he's like he's like uh, you're gonna be winning gold. Oh really? Yeah, like first place. And your your coach he he did he was like, yeah I'm gonna get him on the podcast. Uh, uh -huh. He's he's a five time world champion. Wow. He's going for his sixth world champion. Mean, he's he's in a three three thirty weight class. Where'd you meet him, or how'd you? Uh, I met him uh, connect from a wellness center here, Tucson okay. Wellness. Uh huh. Um, because I'm on TRT, mm -hmm. testosterone replacement therapy. Yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah, my testosterone was like 220 when I went. So now I'm finally normal. What is normal? 850. Oh snap! So you had a quarter. Yeah. So. 220, they were telling me at 220, you have the testosterone of a 74-year-old. Oh, snap. And that happened from the t-shirt business. When I was doing the t-shirt business. Oh, stress, all that stuff. It huh? was stress. They said stress would drop your levels by 500. Wow. Yeah. And then it's almost impossible to get back that 500 from like, without, natural, without yeah. uh, a therapy, uh -huh. like a replacement therapy. So, um, so yeah, man, I'm... I'm not at this, the level like of like pro bodybuilders, powerlifters. They're like mm -hmm. at 1,500 and up. Gosh. Yeah, they're like juiced. Testosterone? Yeah. Well, they're on like anabolic. Well, like, yeah. Like yeah, they're in steroids. Or trend, you know. Yeah, human growth hormone stuff, right? Uh, human growth hormone is like a, I think it's like a peptide, right? Mm -hmm. if, I'm, if I'm correct. So it's not the same. Okay. Um, that's actually really good for you. Mm -hmm. It helps improve like recovery, um, uh, muscle growth. Yeah. You know? But, but like anabolic steroids, those are like, um, it, I mean, just TRT is an, an anabolic. Mm -hmm. Our body produces an anabolic, you know, mm -hmm. um, natural one, natural, right? So I'm just replacing it because I wasn't producing it. So, mm -hmm. um. It's cool because I'm finally able to work out like at natural level, normal levels. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, like 850 yeah. is like a good norm for 30. I'm 33, you mm -hmm. know, so so we'll see how that goes. But um, yeah, so I mean, it's going good. That's good. That's man. been taking up um, four days, four days a week. I go train now. Mm -hmm. I was at six when I was starting. Now I'm down to four. Oh wow. Okay. So a little more rest. He wants mm -hmm. me to rest more. So we'll see. I mean the the. The world record for my weight class and my age is is four twenty two. Bench? Yeah. The world record? Yeah, for my weight class. Really? Yeah. Oh wow. So I could possibly break that if if I get. I have nine weeks to prep. Uh huh. Four twenty two. Yeah. Well, you're at four oh five. Human growth hormone, also called. Sametotrophin is a hormone that is in in the uh, pituitary gland, which is about the size of a pea. Pituitary pee. gland. Pituit pituitary gland. Yeah, and it, that gland is right in the middle of your brain, actually. Really? Yep. Um, and that's what doesn't develop. It has until two parts: the front and the back. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Um, that's why I say your brain doesn't develop till you're 25 because that gland right there is what HGH is. Your body will make naturally, mm -hmm. and then there's a synthetic version which doctors prescribe. I asked him. I was like, "Hey, I'm on TRT. Am I going to be able to compete?" And he's like, "He's like, you're no yeah, you're no your your um your levels are normal, and you're getting testosterone replacement therapy. That's mm -hmm. that's okay. Yeah, because you're you're." You're just replacing what, what you've had, you know, what you're missing. Mm -hmm. um, if your levels exceed over a thousand fifteen hundred, you're no longer natural, because oh. humans don't naturally produce that yeah, amount that much. Yeah. So now you're overdosing yourself on these steroids, mm -hmm. which then becomes a problem. Okay. That's about it. He said, uh, if if um, if you win, I think if you're like first place, they'll they'll test you. Mm -hmm. And then if, if your levels are normal, you're good. You're good, yeah. If they're, if they're over, even if they're under, too. Because what a lot of guys do is they'll get on really high levels of testosterone, work out, get all these gains, right? And then they'll get off. 
they'll mm-hmm. they won't dose like their normal dose. Mm-hmm. And then what that does is it makes your 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 levels drop mm-hmm. like really low. Mm-hmm. Like you'll be like three hundred or four. But you're yoked. But you're already you already performed really yeah. well on that, yeah. right? And then you 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 right before your your mm-hmm. meet, mm-hmm. you skip a cycle mm-hmm. and you or a week of injections or whatever, mm-hmm. and you drop really low. So then when you when you test, it's really low. Hmm. So that's also a red flag too. It's like, okay. why are you so low and able to perform this well? Yeah. You're trying to hide it, you know? Yeah, yeah. So there's little things that they do. Mm-hmm. Um, so Interesting. yeah. Interesting. That's cool, man. I'll oh. get him on here to talk about it more. Yeah. Like he, he's been drug free, mm-hmm. um, uh, five time world champion doing mm-hmm. that for a little while. So Natural. I'll have to get him on here. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be cool. That'd be really cool. Learn more about it, you know? yeah. You know, I think we're. Well, I don't think I know. We're in an, an election year this year as well. You know. Oh yeah. <laughs> I hate politics, bro. Man, yeah, it, it's just so annoying. How, yeah, how it's just and so, frustrating. Like, yeah. like how on every on both on both ends now. You know what I'm saying? It used to be that, you know, you picked a side and you know whatever it is, whether if you were red or blue, Republican or Democrat or Independent, whatever, but. In the last just four years, the landscape has changed so much on both ends. You know, you have far left just as you have far right. You know, and yeah. it's just kind of, it, it is annoying to be honest. You know, yeah. it's annoying to look at the news. It's annoying to, you know, I catch up just because, you know, but I wasn't following, I'm not following it like I did, you know, yeah. a few years ago. I, I definitely know? like when, you know, Trump was, uh, assassinated attempt attempted sass- assassination oh, yeah. Yeah. I was like uh, I mean that's that's something that's like not really I was talking to Eddie about it today it's not mm-hmm. really uh, political it's it's historical oh yeah you know so that yep. caught my attention and I was like wow like this this is getting out of hand you mm-hmm. know like something is really something really bad is gonna happen where you know and I think the days are the it Time is accelerating, right? The days are accelerating, all leading up to the rapture, right? Um, you know, I was talking to my mom last night and just talking about family and stuff, you know, and it's kind of like, depends on who you talk to, right? If you want to talk to the optimis, optimistic person, you know, they're, they're going to tell you, hey, you know, a lot of people are accepting Jesus in their lives and People, you know, and it's true. A lot of people are coming into salvation, mm-hmm. right? But on the flip side of that, there's a lot of people that are just ultimately just rejecting Jesus, mm. you know? And we're not even talking about bad people, right? We're not even talking about drug addicts and, you know, no, we're talking about just, just people, normal people. They're just rejecting God, mm-hmm. right? And ultimately, that's what's going to send, that's what sends somebody to hell, Right. Right. Rejecting God. That's what you did. Rejecting Jesus, the sacrifice that he made. That's what sends people to hell. You know, mm-hmm. and we're talking about good, educated people that just blatantly just. Yeah. Know, you know, I've been seeing uh, these videos on Instagram where people will go up to people on the street and they say, mm-hmm. hey, you know about Jesus? Mm-hmm. They're like, get away. Mm-hmm. And he goes up to like. Like fifty plus people, bro. Oh, yeah. It's like quick clips, you know. Mm-hmm. And it's all those, it's all in one post. And he's like, "Hey, have you ever heard of Jesus?" It's like, people get offended, mm-hmm. they get angry, yeah. they get defensive, they they like, like leave me alone. Yeah. I don't care about that, you yeah. know. And just just constant rejection. Yep. Yeah. Rejection, rejection, yeah. rejection. Yeah. Then you'll get one person who's like, "Yeah, yeah," you know. Mm-hmm. And it's just like, yeah. I was like, "Wow, yep." Yeah. That is, I remember uh, fifteen years ago. We would do outreaches, mm-hmm. go knocking on people's doors, mm-hmm. knock on their door. Mm-hmm. Hey, have you heard about Jesus? No. Or, oh, yeah, yeah, I know about him. Mm-hmm. Oh, can I tell you? And then they're open. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you can have a conversation about yep. Jesus. Yep. You know, and it's like, you know, like the Olympics and like all these places that just are making it their goal, right? Mm-hmm. It's, it's the will of God mm-hmm. is what it is. Yeah. Men will, you know, <laughs> they're going to reject. Mm-hmm. And it's going to be, I mean, I mean, every nation will be against mm-hmm. Israel. Mm-hmm. Politics are like, like this yep. compared to what's going to happen, you know? But you know, on the flip side of that is 
the media and just everything in general, social media, the news, everything, they try to subdue the, the other side of that coin, and that is the awakening, mm. right, of people actually coming to Christ, right? right? Because in social media, again, you saw so many of the athletes that were at the Olympics, Yeah, thank God, when they would win gold or bronze or whatever, right, they'd be like, I want to thank my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Without him, this would not be possible. You didn't see that on the news. Yeah, and then it's, they edited it out. Yeah, in the instead you would see drag queens, you know, mocking, you know, the story of the Bible, you know. That's on the spotlight, you know. And even before this, I remember mm-hmm. I remember when the, the whole George Floyd thing happened, right? The whole, you know, uh, BLM movement, uh-huh. the whole defund the cops or defund the police, all that stuff. Yep. But what you didn't see, I saw clips of, you're talking about dozens and maybe not hundreds of people meeting at the place where George Floyd was shot and singing worship songs. Yeah. Right? But you don't see that. You don't see that, right? All you see is the right. rejection. All you see is the rejection. But if you just take a moment to be personal about it, and what I mean is talk to people about it, people are open. People mm. are open. You know, the last month or so, we've had visitors at the church that have come in and given their life to Jesus. And I always ask him, hey, how'd you hear about us? Oh, we got a flyer at our door. Mm. Or, you know, one of the, you know, th- that little girl over there, she came and she knocked and she gave us a flyer. We just didn't have a chance to come last Sunday, but we're here this Sunday, right? right? And they gave their life to Jesus and stuff like that. So those are the things that you don't see unless you choose to not be a spectator. Right. Right. If you're if you're a spectator on the sidelines, you're not going to see a whole lot. You're not you're not going to experience a whole lot. Yeah. Right. We just talked about what being a good father was. Right. It takes work. Mm-hmm. Being a good Christian takes work. You have to get your hands dirty per se. Right. You have to be out there. You have to you have to sweat. You know. Yeah. It, it's it's yeah. Social media has its place. Don't get me wrong, but nothing is ever going to replace that one on one. Nothing. I don't care. How much of a progressive Christian you are, <laughs> you know? People are like, oh, well, that's that well, that's old school. No, it's not old school. Nothing will ever be able to replace that personal one-on-one relationship building. Yeah. And I can tell you firsthand because we're out there, you know. Yes, we're only thirty minutes away from from the church, our mother church. Uh, but it's a battle, man. That when Pastor Warner told me you're not going to a playground, you're going to a battleground. It's true. Yeah. Yeah, that's very true because on the flip side of the coin, and, and just to backtrack a little bit, like I support Israel. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, me You too. know what I mean? Yeah. Like 100%. Yes. It's just you got to understand what the Bible says. Mm-hmm. And the Bible clearly talks about how every nation will, you know. Oh, yeah. Be- yeah. Sorry, this light is flickering. Yeah, in the last days, you know, it says the hearts of men will grow cold. On the flip side to that coin, mm-hmm. a revival. A last day's revival is going to come. That's right. So there's still a movement that's happening, right? Yeah. It's all it's all coming into fruition, as people say. You're not going to see something happening if if you're not involved in it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. If you're involved in negativity, if you're involved in everything wrong with the world, that's what your feed's going to be filled with. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, just like Instagram, you're on there, you're scrolling, you see something, you watch the whole thing. Next thing you know your feed is just filled with that, those things that are f- same content. Yep. You know what I mean? That's right. So whatever you're putting your your effort into, mm-hmm. so to speak, that's what's going to be around you, you know? So yep. I agree, you know? And you're you're in the front lines, so to speak, mm-hmm. as, as, a, as a pastor mm-hmm. in the last days. Mm-hmm. I mean, you probably feel it more than your average Joe mm-hmm. Christian, right? Mm-hmm. Walking yeah. down the street, yeah. Yeah. you know? I remember um, being younger in my faith with a fire Mm -hmm. i would look out on the street and just get moved just seeing Mm -hmm. people that are walking on the street that doesn't happen anymore for me Mm -hmm. because you know you get desensitized the longer you're in that's why you got to keep that you got to cultivate that you got to keep it on the forefront Mm -hmm. you got to keep pursuing that or else it's going to fade away Mm -hmm. you know um i think we've had conversations about that oh yeah recently so yeah yeah, it's very true. A lot of, you know, that's why the Bible says many are called, but few are chosen, you know, because a lot of people 
get that hype. You know, mm-hmm. it's that hype. Yeah, you get that high, and then it goes down. Another thing and about that hype is you can get overhyped mm-hmm. to where it pushes people away. Oh yeah, I, I've 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 recently experienced that for some guys where it's mm-hmm. like conference just ends, and they're like, oh. I'm going. Mm-hmm. This is it. Mm-hmm. This is it's time. Mm-hmm. And then every time you go up to him, hey, what's up, bro? Oh, it's time. It's like, <laughs> no, how are you doing? Oh, I'm ready. <laughs> and it's like, oh shoot. <laughs> you know, am I wait? Am I not as spiritual? Yeah, am I not yeah, yeah, yeah. Like as, the over spiritualized. Yeah, and so yeah. then then I start to I start to like crap. Maybe I'm not spiritual at all. <laughs> yeah. Like this guy's ready for yeah. The battle. Yeah. And then I, I, you know, the next time I see him, oh, I just, it's time. And it's like, dude, okay. All right. It's time. So you can, you can go it's overboard. Say every time you can go over. Time. It's time. You know? The UFC. Yeah. It's time. You can go overboard. You know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah, there's a balance and it's, it's a lifestyle that you got to choose. Like I was just telling my wife the other day, it's like, you know, it's, it's, it, 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 it sometimes drains you. Mm-hmm. It's just draining, you know? Yeah. You know, I, what, I, I pastor 30 people, you know what I'm saying? Um, and, you know, I, I can't even fathom, like, Pastor Gary, Pastor Warner, you know, all, you know, them having to deal with, you know, the you know, problems and issues of a church that big, you know? Right. And it's draining, man. It's draining, and your family goes through it, you know? Um Last year, I went to Argentina, and I came back. I went to Argentina with Pastor Garrett, and we were at a conference, and God gave me a word over there, and then on the way back from the, I was in the middle of the ocean, right? And God told me, hey, something's going to happen, but you need to trust me. And I was like, oh, man. Uh, I was like, all right. Uh, You know, we land on a Monday. By Wednesday or Thursday, I'm out of a job. Boom. And I'm like, what in the world? I just bought a house. We went in October. I bought the house in August. And I'm like, what am I going to do? Mm. You know. But I had remembered God, what God told me on the plane. Long story short, we just had a you know, Tucson conference. Um, can't really say I heard the voice of God or you know, anything like that. But God challenged me in, in, in new ways. And I made some commitments. Um, and then that was, what, the third week of June? Second week of July, I'm out of a job again. And I'm just like, what? what's happening? You know, like, yeah, you know, like, what's going on here? You know, like, and, and I'm like, God, I'm out here doing your will. I'm doing this. I'm doing this and this and this. And like, how am I going to pay my bills? You know, um, but that the church didn't stop. Right. Mm-hmm. I still have to seek the mind of God, you know preach and stuff like that and obviously i'm not like spending weeks writing a sermon right because you know it's a pioneer pastor right a few hours here a few hours there right and you try your best and god does the rest but if you're not i think i think if if as a christian you're not being inconvenienced in your life not all the time but if there's moments in your walk with god and in your own life where you're not inconvenienced then I think you need to take some personal inventory. And what I mean by that is inconvenience in the sense of you have to put your agenda on hold for something else, either for following up on somebody, right? Yeah. Going to an outreach, going to this, going to that. I mean, I prefer to do other things. That's so true you say that. But you have to be inconvenienced. (laughs) You know, it's kind of like it doesn't. It's, it doesn't fit my agenda. Well, of course it doesn't. It right. never. It's never going to fit your agenda. That's the whole point. <laughs> yeah. Recently, um, I was going to Bible study with at Richard and Ed's, mm-hmm. and me and my wife are like, so I, I live in I live here in Tucson and mm-hmm. work out in Vail. That, that Bible study's in Vail, mm-hmm. so that means I have to get off of work, come pick up my family, then drive all the way back to the same area I was in all day. Mm-hmm. Twenty minute drive one yeah. way. Mm-hmm. So. I'm driving that three, four times on a Friday, mm-hmm. right? And I was like, this is so inconvenient. Mm-hmm. You know, this is like, <laughs> so we were ready. We, I, I literally, I was about to tell Ed, like, hey, I don't think we're, after this season, we're not going to continue here. Mm-hmm. And before I tell him that, he's like, hey, um, 
would you be down to do Bible study at your house? Mm. And I'm like, oh, that's even more inconvenient. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. But I, I know God is like trying to uh, help expand mm -hmm. what he's doing in yeah. our lives. So yeah. I was like, okay, yeah. Uh, yeah, we could host it here. He's all, I want you to lead it. Mm-hmm. Oh, even shoot, more. even more inconvenient, you know? <laughs> yeah. Because you got to prep, you know, there's times mm -hmm. you got to prep, you got to be in your word, you got to be in prayer, you got to be mm -hmm. available, you know? And so so I completely understand what you're saying. It's like, if you're not being inconvenienced, then what is God doing in your mm -hmm. life? Yeah. Because the will of God is an inconvenience mm -hmm. because it's not our will, that's it's right. his. Yeah, that's right, yeah. So it's automatically going to go against what you're wanting, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, and not to say that you put everything, you know, cause your first, your first ministry is your family, you know? Right. That's, that's, you know, speaking of family, say, you know, speaking of family, the kids, what's up kids. What? You brought me a ball. Yeah. Oh, wow. Thank you. I'm going to throw it. I'm going to throw it. Yes. Okay. Go get it. I love you. Love you. <laughs> oh, Still Careful. love you. Still love you. <laughs> Still love you. <laughs> Careful. Go under. Go under. All right. Hey. Hey. Uh, Jaden. Go tell mom we'll be done in 10 minutes. Actually, five minutes. Yes? Uh, five minutes. Thank you. Um. Yeah, your first family is your, your first family is your ministry, you know. Right. But some people take that to the extreme. Yeah. You know, some people take that to the extreme to where, you know, they it's kind of like a scapegoat phrase. Right. You know. It's and, like, oh, my family's on ministry. My son has football. Yeah. 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 That you know? you know. Yeah. Or like, hey, I've been at work all day. Like, I need to be home and spend time with my family. Yeah. You know, instead, of, you know, instead of again, I'm not, you know, I'm not, I'm not calling people out. Like, if you don't go to our region, no, I get it. People are busy. You know, I'm mindful of that. You know, even in my own church, you know, what I'm saying, right? Like, I, 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 if people aren't showing up because of this. I'm not just oh, well, you're not putting God first. Right. You know, like what's going on? No, you know, uh, as a pastor, you're you're not there to tell people how to their lives. That's the Holy Spirit's. You know, you just pray for them and you pray that they get it, you know, and, right. you, and you have moments where just like, yes, they're think, getting I, it. I think so. if we're all honest, though, mm -hmm. our, if we're all honest, when things take precedence over the things of God. Oh, yeah. Well, that's you, idolatry. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's idolatry. It's just, you, you know, you, you, and, it, and not, not saying one time. Right. It's got to be a consistent like thing. It's a practice. A practice. Right. Yeah. yeah. I mean. Yeah. Those who practice sin, when you practice something is you do it habitually. You know, right? So yeah, I don't, I I don't know if it. I mean, does it does it qualify as sin? What? When? See, I guess that's the that's that's the area that people are afraid to talk about, right? Is like other other doing other things versus like let's let's dumb it down mm -hmm. to simple going to church, mm -hmm. choosing other things over going to church. Oh, absolutely. I, well, I don't want to say it's a sin, right? I don't. I wouldn't go as far as saying it's a sin, um, because it's a matter of the heart, right? If if some if in your heart there's anything above God, then that's idolatry. That's sin. The right. Bible says, "He who knows to do good and doesn't do it, to him it's counted a sin." Right. Right. So you always you, you so you always we always talk about the sins of commission. Right. Right. The sins of commission are sins that you commit. Right, that you but the do sins of omission. drugs, but the sins of omission are things that you know you need to do, but you don't do. Right, you have the parable of the talents. Right, right. The one with the five gave him ten. The one with the two gave him four. The one with the one, he buried it. Yeah, but he didn't sin, right? Like he did. It's not like he went and squandered it. It's not like he was, you know, maybe you know, just you know, wheeling right. and dealing. No, right. he did what he thought was best for him, right? And get this, when the master comes back and he tells him, oh, it's because you were a hard master. I knew you to be a hard master. The master, which is a representation of God, he doesn't say, oh, no, I'm not. He acknowledges, he doesn't, re he doesn't refute the fact that he is a hard master, right? And what does he call him? You wicked and lazy servant. He doesn't just tell him lazy. He says, you're wicked, hmm. right? 
you're not just lazy, you're a wicked servant as well. Because, because he was concerned about his own do, well-being, right? Yeah. He was concerned about his well-being. He wasn't concerned about the master's, right? And I think that's when it becomes sin is when you're concerned about your own well-being, right? Instead of what does God want me to your do? Your kingdom come, your will be done. Yeah, right? So, yeah. So I feel like it's when your priority mm-hmm. is not the things of God. Mm-hmm. I feel like that's when it becomes an issue, right? Mm-hmm. Because it's great. Why are we Christian? Mm-hmm. Because we want to live for God and do his will, right? And we want to see his will be done, right? I mean, you could probably dumb it down even simpler than mm-hmm. that, right? Mm-hmm. But it's like, I'm guilty of it too, you mm-hmm. know? Not wanting to go to prayer sometimes. Mm-hmm. Oh, like this morning, I slept in. Mm-hmm. And then I woke up to go to prayer, but then I slow rolled it out of the house. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, I can't go to prayer. Mm-hmm. For five minutes, only for five? No, nah, I'm just going to go straight to work. Mm-hmm. I'll pray in the car. Yeah. I'll pray on my way to work. <laughs> right? Yeah. Not saying that that's sin, mm-hmm. but like, where's my priority? My yeah. priority was getting more sleep. Yep. Right? Yep. Now, does that make it sin? No. I Maybe. Mm-hmm. Do I idolatry, uh, idol, uh, idolize. idolize my sleep? Mm-hmm. Maybe. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. So those are things that we have to think about as Christians. People think that, oh, being a Christian is easy. Oh, you just go to church and, mm-hmm. and say a few prayers. Mm-hmm. Like it's, it's a constant daily thing that you have to remind yourself and go against your own flesh, right? Well, it's a war. It's a yeah. warfare. It's warfare. Any good soldier doesn't wake up. You're in a war. You don't wake up, you know, the next day and be like, oh, today I can take it easy. Right. That doesn't mean you got to be like all intense all the time. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, you're watching a football game and all you want to do is witness. Like, oh, you have like an itch. You're like, oh, no, I got to go witness. I can't be here. Well, you yeah, know? I mean that. You know, that. I mean, there's got to be a balance to it. You know what I'm saying? That, and that's not what I'm talking about. Like, you always got to be. Like, dang, but dang. I, I will tell you this. I remember when I first got saved, my agenda in my world revolved around the church. Mm-hmm. Plain and simple. And I was single, right? You're married, it's a little different. Right. But talking to the single guys, you have so many single guys that they want the church to revolve around their agenda. And what do I mean by that? If I ever wanted to go out of town, I always, I always verified, is there an outreach that Saturday? Is there an event that Saturday? Is the church holding anything on that weekend? Right. Right. And if it did, hey, sorry, I can't go. Right. And it wasn't because, oh, I'm super spiritual or stuff like that. No, but I was so grateful where God took me out of mm-hmm. that I wanted to be in church. I wanted to be around people that loved God, that loved me, that I could be myself around, and that I could serve. Right. All that is a byproduct of a relationship with God. Right? Mm. That relationship breeds that in you. Everything that we do, it's not, look at the thief on the cross. The thief on the cross never spoke in tongues, never got baptized, never tithed. Never, never, never lived never, for God. Never outreached, never did any of that. Right. Right? So you don't necessarily need all of that to make Kevin your home. So it's not a matter of do you have to do it? It's you get to do it. It's a privilege. You get to speak in tongues. It's a gift. You get to give back to God what is already his. That's a, that's a privilege. You get to go to church. That's God's bride. You get to be a part of God's bride. Yeah, back to the thief on the cross. I mean, he didn't get to, get to experience the blessings of God Mm-mm. on this earth. Yeah. Did he make it to heaven? Absolutely. Yeah. But he missed out on so much. So much goodness. That's right. Because yep. he, he probably lived, uh, he's a thief, mm-hmm. right? What, what brought him to that level was probably poverty, mm-hmm. to be honest, mm-hmm. or ill will right mm-hmm. like wines is just evil mm-hmm. right so it's like I'm, I'm pretty sure being a thief back then is a little bit a, a big difference compared to thieves now mm-hmm. right yeah, yeah. I mean they probably killed people mm-hmm. like more often than mm-hmm. not right mm-hmm. to steal from them so it's like you're, you're here you are is, is I mean obviously if he's being crucified he did some pretty wicked things. Oh, yeah. Yep. I mean, if you're up there on the cross about to be murdered, yep. that's death sentence. Mm-hmm. You, you, you probably killed a few families or yeah. did well, whatever. Well, it's, it's not just a death sentence. It's the most gruesome and humiliating. death sentence right. ever. Because they could have they killed him in other ways. Right. So he's on this cross about to be crucified. His entire life is just this wicked living, right? Mm-hmm. And then he's given this gift of going to heaven. 
Yeah. But here, here we are. We're not sentenced to death. We get to experience all those things, like you're saying. You know, that's yeah. a that's a blessing in yeah. itself. You know, yeah, it's that you get to. You don't yeah. have to. Is you get to. That's the difference between legalism and not. You know, it's like you don't have to be at church. You don't have to go to outreach. Right. You don't have to witness. You don't have to tithe. You don't have to speak in tongues. You don't have to do any of that. You get to do that. God yeah. is giving you that privilege, right? Mm -hmm. you, you, it's like we get to worship God. Think about this. You get to clap. You get to raise your hands. You get to sing to God, right? Lucifer was the song service leader in heaven, right? We heard that all the time. You know, he had a beautiful voice, beautiful angel, all that. He took a third of the angels with him, but he, get, he was able to worship God. Now, when he, get, when he gets cast out of heaven, he can no longer worship God. And who did God give the privilege to, to worship him? Us. Even Fallen he, man, you well, know? D didn't they say that angels marvel at us? Oh, yeah. I, think, I, I, I believe so. For the privilege yeah. that we have, mm -hmm. right? Two weeks, we're going to have a guest from, where's he from? He's from El Paso, uh, Pastor Jerry Sarabia. From El Paso, Texas, we're going to have a guest on here. Yeah, he just got announced to, um, I, it's either Albania or Armenia. He's going to be a missionary uh, over there. So okay. We're going to get him on here. We're going to actually, we'll, we'll, we'll pack everything up and do it at his church. Yeah. And um, get to talk to him. So make sure you tune in for that. He will be doing a revival. I mean, if you're in Tucson, if you want to go ahead and shout that out. Yeah, uh, Revival, September 6th, 7th, and 8th, which is a Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Uh, Friday and Saturday at 7 p.m. nightly. And then Sunday is 10 a.m., 7 p.m. Uh, he's going to be doing a revival for us. Uh, that's the first weekend of September, so not this coming weekend, but the following. Yeah, so, so if uh, you're interested in that, message us in the comments, and we'll get you the information. It's 8567 North Silver Bell Road. Yeah, so thank you for joining us. Uh, we're going to be probably doing one to two a month. Um, if it really calls for it, we'll do three. Um, it just depends. It just depends on, on our schedules, you know, our family schedules. And uh, uh, if you're not subscribed, make sure you subscribe to the Word Exchange. Uh, hit that like button. If you didn't like it, hit that thumbs down. Um, yeah, we'll see you guys later.